Hello, PopCon freaks, geeks, weirdos, and creeps. I am George Lane. I am the co-director of the PopCon International Film Festival. And I am Audrey Lane, also the co-director and programmer of the PopCon International Film Festival. And we are super stoked because joining us today is Samuel Gonzalez Jr. Samuel, welcome. Hey. Do I have to have like a better intro? Do I just step in? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like it. I like it. Hi. <laughs> awesome. Thank you for making time to talk with us this evening. Sure, sure. It's a very relaxed night. It's perfect. We just need to put a fire, a little fireplace between us. And I know, some, right? Oh, yeah. chocolate. We, we need to incorporate a Yule log on here or something. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> so okay. let's jump into it. Let's do it. Happy so, to be here. Thanks for having me, guys. Absolutely. Absolutely. We always kind of come back to... Um, just one of the things that first impressed us about seeing any of your work was that killer cinematography. Oh my gosh. So the first work that we did see from you was um, the Springfield three. And again, the cinematography and imagery of that film was just spectacular. Um, so before we like whole jump into that, um, you've done a lot of, different things since the start of your career. We got a chance to go through all of your um, things that you sent us, all of the short films, all of the little documentaries. I want to move to Pasadena now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> for sure, for sure. I love that. Tell us a little, like tell everyone a little bit about that because I was not expecting that to be in your repertoire. I'm moving to Pasadena? Oh no, the the doc, the little short doc on Pasadena. Oh gosh. Well, that was like when I when I graduated from film school, I was still like in between like jumping into like actual real work. And I'd made such a incredible relationship with the city of Pasadena. Basically, because when you're in film school, you need locations for free or the hookup. And I would just everyone was paying to get locations, but I was like, just visit the film department, the permit department, and just bring them donuts and treats and they'll hook you up. <laughs> Very smart. You know, so I would go there all the time, even just knock on their door. Hey guys, even if I didn't even want anything or shoot anything, I just wanted to make friends. So after, I know it sounds like I'm manipulating them. I'm like, we're going to be friends. And after like five visits, I'm like, I need a 1950s location. Cool. <laughs> uh, and they're like, yeah, we'll hook you up. No problem. And uh, so it was uh, after, after film school, they asked me to direct a little doc about the city of Pasadena and all the, uh, um, all the big uh, corporations that were forming in the city and, you know, Silicon Valley was like kind of going into there, into that city. And uh, so I did this little mini doc and then it, it was supposed to be just something small, but it blew up. It got an Emmy nomination and everything. Which is amazing. I mean, of course, I'm sure you didn't think, oh, well, I'm going to do this and I'm going to get an Emmy nomination, which is pretty, you know, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, it was fun. It was cool. It was just, it was just different. Cause it's like, when you look at people at the Emmys and everyone looks like, actors or good looking people. And then you look at our people, our side, it's a bunch of like Pasadena film permit office and me. It's like, <laughs> this is weird. That's awesome. That, that's awesome. Like I said, it was so well done. And I looked over at George when, when we were finished, I go, man, I think I might want to move to Pasadena now. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was so impressive. Uh, and I was just kind of like, wait a minute. I'm like, wow. I mean, Cause I, I've seen those before. We've seen those, you know, for, you know, checking out, you know, there's other, um, commercials for different areas and different states. And I was just like, wow, that is a nice damn ad to, you know, for, for any place that you want to go. And I was just like, I had no idea Pasadena had so much to offer. I was like, this is a. Uh, yeah. The nice, team that's nice. like, the oh, team yeah. that's like put the, uh, put every, that's putting everybody or the, eventually is going to send a man to, to Mars and send the Rover over there. They, they all did that in Pasadena. Yeah. Wow. And then, and, and, and plus also your, your eye for capturing everything in that area. I was just like, this is impressive. It was, uh, I've, I've seen a bit of what Pasadena uh, looks like, but wow, how you showcased Pasadena, you know, it, that's that right there is, it, it made you want to end up going, even if you're like, oh, it's just Pasadena. It's just like, no, Pasadena. Exactly. It's like <laughs> it cinematic, cinematic Pasadena. But exactly. I was worried when they hired me because I was like, you sure you want me to do it? Because all my stuff is like bloody and it's going to scare people away from your city. Are you okay with that? 
It did quite the opposite, quite the opposite. So I, we, I definitely wanted to throw that in like off the jump because I, it, it just wasn't what I was expecting when I was looking at your real rear and I, uh, your real, geez. Um, <laughs> Look at this rear. <laughs> I know, I was like, what, we, what kind of show is this? <laughs> I'm in. That's a whole nother show. <laughs> I know, the mute button, Otter. Take it easy. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, so I'm blushing. Um, so, oh. <laughs> so, what did you do after that? So, I, we know you've got all these amazing things under your belt. Um, so, you did your um, Emmy nominated um, doc. What, wh what, where did you steer next? Oh, that's a long journey from that from that moment to now. Well, we, yeah, and a, and a sprinkle of in between, yeah, of course. What'd you do after that? Because I'm, I mean, we know that your history is horror. You like true crime. Um, we have so much in common. Um, just that mind of true crime and always, that, that's my thing. He always, what are you watching now? What Killing People show are you watching now? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Don't make fun. I've had, many, I've had many roommates that have moved out because they're like, right first thing in the morning, they can barely wake up. They just want their coffee, and I'm already watching like uh, forensic files or uh, cold case files. They're like, it's eight in the morning. I was like, <laughs> why not? <laughs> That's me. That was probably the one reason, like, when we decided to get rid of cable, and he's just like, great, you're not going to be on investigation ID all day long. Or, no, wait, wait, I got to watch this. Wait, it's a two parter. Wait, hang on. I got it's to finish the series. I it's love it. I it's love it. It feels so good. I don't know. There's something about it. And then um, I don't know. But it's after a while, you like, I have to stop because I'm like, now I'm starting to get paranoid. Everyone <laughs> I look at, I'm like, you did it. Yep. Yeah. You have killer <laughs> eyes. Yeah. So now I have to be careful. So I, I'll give myself doses. And then every once in a while, I'll put a Pixar movie in. It like levels me out. So, oh yeah, that's that's good because yeah, sometimes I'm like it's it's straight up like a Hallmark movie. I'm like, oh cool, it's already done. It's just like, and now part three. And I'm like, oh, son of a, oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> never and ends. They finally got him right, and they're like, maybe no, <laughs> no, no. And it just goes on and on. It's uh, there's so much content right now. It's just you can never catch up. It's great. Yeah, which is a great segue to um, the Springfield three. Um, I get really excited when I know about things. And so when the film came on and I saw the introduction, I go, man, I'm pretty sure that I know this story. I'm pretty sure that I know this story. And uh, right. um, and I did. And it was great. So tell us how you got involved with Springfield 3 and why you wanted to make this particular out of all the things that you could have went toward. What was it about this true event that moved you to to do it yeah um well you know i like like you audrey i'm a, I'm a true crime enthusiast uh I, I think like well i think we're all like you and i and uh, you know all the other ones out there were like almost like true crime amateur detectives in a way too we were like there's a point of us want to solve it you know and um i i've uh, i have so many uh, in my in my pocket of like ones that I that have stuck with me throughout the years. I go, we have to tell this story. And Springfield is just one of them because it happened three decades ago now, and um, it's one of the ones that have. Not only is it colder than cold, but it's forgotten. People don't really even remember the case. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, every once in a while, cold cases still get remembered and people talk about it. But this one is lost. Even people in Springfield you'll bring up, and they're like, "No, I'm not sure." I was like, "How is this possible? This is." An incredible story about, uh, and one and one of the most haunting true crime uh, stories out there. Uh, there is no evidence, zero evidence out there, none. Um, so I, I I think well, going from like film school to this moment, that's a long story mm -hmm. uh, that went like this. But uh, <laughs> there came a point where I was like, you know what, it's time to to do a short film about about this case. And um, I didn't have the money. There was no budget at all whatsoever. I, I had so much research that was compiled on my desk, and um, a lot of um, a lot of resources that were that were able to be helpful to pull it off. And uh, we just pulled the trigger. It started with like a friend being like, "I want to be in something. You got anything?" I was like, "I think I might." And then like two days later, I had the script, and we went with it. So for those that aren't familiar with this um, true event. Tell everyone what this uh, 
whole story is about um, as much as you you know can tell without giving everything away. But I mean, it, it's out there, um, not about your movie in particular, but w about the actual, you know, the case that started all of this. Sure, sure. No, it's a, it's important to remember. And like it, the the case happened in 1992 in Springfield, Missouri, and between two friends from high school and one of the one of the girl's mother, and uh, they were all staying in the same house one night um, in in, uh, in 1992, and uh, they vanished the next day. They were supposed to meet some friends to go to a water park. The mother was supposed to go to work the next day. Um, they all checked in on them the next morning. Phone calls, visited visited them, and. Uh, it, it was, uh, it was, not, they left their purses, their clothes left behind, their dog, keys left, their cars parked. They just vanished. Uh, there was no sign of a struggle, uh, nothing at all. And uh, the, 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 the family and friends that came by to check, they deleted a really creepy message that was on the answering machine, thinking that it was just like, just a random creepy message. They accidentally deleted it. There was some broken glass out front from the light, from the light from the porch that was unscrewed and broke that was cleaned up and thrown away. Those two things are the, probably the, the best evidence they could have ever had. And it was just, just destroyed. So that's all they had to work on. And, you know, three decades later, just about, there's no sign of them. They never found their bodies. They never knew what happened to them. It's and that just is just one of the strangest cases, because usually there's something that leads a, a, an investigation in some direction. But this yeah. one, it seems like, they cleared everybody pretty quickly. I, you know, with following this case over the years and seeing different, um, you know, shows about it, Unsolved Mysteries. And I mean, there's been a couple of other investigative shows where they've, you know, had this case. I don't know if people were cleared too quickly and they didn't delve as much as they should have with certain aspects or they did do it and it just led nowhere. Um, if I can ask, what do you think, like in with being so close to this in your gut, what do you think could have happened? Oh, you got to watch the film for that. Um, but <laughs> if I <laughs> go watch the film because it gives you, uh, well, you guys have seen it. I never, we never really hammer home exactly one particular theory on the fact that they were abducted. They were definitely abducted. They were definitely yeah. taken. There was not. There was not no weird conspiracy where they ran away or something, something else. Um, there, there, there was definitely, uh, they definitely knew the person. They definitely trusted the person, um, whoever they was that took him because, uh, there was no struggle. Nobody forced mm -hmm. their way in. They didn't break in. Um, and they were definitely taken in the middle of the night. There is theories that there is a person in prison. Uh, there is a person of interest that they're looking at that is in prison right now for another crime. And he's saying that he does know where the where the women are buried, but he won't release the, that information wow. until, his, until his mother passes away. I don't know if that's true. It could be because there's lots of people out there that just want notoriety. There's some weirdos out there that want notoriety for something. Yeah, it's, and take it's possible that could be that. It's possible, yeah. but they were definitely taken by someone. Um, we don't know if they're alive or not out there. You know, we can only we can only hope and pray that they are alive and together. If they're not, then I, I hope the film brings awareness to the to the story and hopefully, you know, be able to bring them home one day. That's Absolutely. I really, yeah. really care about the, about them and, and their memory. I really tried to do that in the film and try to get people to understand the relationship and not just see something tragic. Yeah, it was definitely respectful. And that's one of those things that attracted us to it is, you know, you can tell with some filmmakers, they'll, they'll go and you can see where it almost seems a little bit exploitative. Uh, but with, with yours, it was, uh, yeah, and I think that's it goes beyond with just the Springfield three. Your work is uh, always more heartfelt, uh, in my opinion. Um, and, and, you, and it's evident when watching uh, a lot of your work. So uh, that shines through and especially dealing with such uh, sensitive material. Uh, yeah, I, I think that it was great. And it was you know very respectful. I don't think any of the families would have an issue with with even seeing that. And um you know, they, they would, they would understand. I hope, I hope not. Yeah. We haven't, we haven't heard anything about, uh, you know, negative feedback as of yet, but I, that was the, the core of the story was to bring awareness to the case, to help us remember the girls and to really understand their relationships leading up to their disappearance. I didn't want to just show a tragedy. That's not what this is about. Um, and we want to remember the girls and, uh, experience what they might've went through. Um, yeah. Which is like, it, it's, 
it's just so damn mind boggling. I think this is one of the cases out of all the true crime things that, you know, I'd love to research and find out about. And um, I don't know. I think this one is so mind boggling because there is nothing. I mean, usually you, there is yeah. some kind of lead that takes people to a direction or, you know, they can say, you know, you know, it bad breakup, um, mom's ex-boyfriend, you know, you know, or they, they had a problem with a neighbor, you know, Stop your ex-boyfriend, whatever. There's so many yeah, scenarios. Yeah. Yep. You know, a fingerprint. there's nothing. And that is what freaks me out about this particular case is that there was, you know, there's just, you know, someone knows something and eventually, you know, hopefully that will come out somewhere. So I hope so. I hope so. It's a case that I, I, I track frequently and i follow so many other cold cases that it's been cold for 40 years and they finally got a clue so i i'm I, it's it's possible that it can be solved i really hope i hope so definitely for the, family, for the families you know yep because oh, yeah. those are the ones left behind and you know it it's sad um so we watched um miniature and oh. I loved that. I'm yeah. actually kind of mad it hadn't been on my radar before that we hadn't seen it. Um, did we not submit to the to, to the festival? Maybe we didn't. I don't remember. No, you did. No, <laughs> no. Damn. Caught. But <laughs> <laughs> you're more than welcome. Uh, yeah, we. Wow, and 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 it was great because we we know Andy Palmer, uh, the edited uh, miniature, and yeah. it was. Man, I'm like very impressive. I even loved all the all the makeup on, oh the, my on the gosh. characters. And I, I was just like, oh, I want to stop it. But then it's like, I don't want to mess up the pace. It's just like, I just want to pause it. I'm like, oh, wow. I'm like, look at that. And it just uh -huh. looked, it, it just, it made it all come to life. And it, it was, it was a lot of fun. It was, yeah. That makeup artist was badass because yeah. those look like shellac creepy Barbies. And... <laughs> It just, just that kind of, oh my gosh, I, it was great. It was great. The story was phenomenal. It was creepy. Um, yeah. Well, I want to do a shout out to the makeup department then while I, while we're live, because that's my, that's, those are, that's my family and I love them so much. Nocturnal oh, that's Designs. awesome, dude. <laughs> yeah. Nocturnal Designs, Casey Musman and, and Or Musman, they're, uh, they're an incredible team and they're amazing. If you, if you, if you walk through Monster Palooza, you'll see a lot of their work. Oh, they're, I want to go there so bad. So and, bad. God, I just miss it. I just miss it so much. I can't wait. But anyway, they're amazing at what they do. And they're a huge part of my, my film family. So they, they, we work together pretty often, but shout out to them. They, they really brought to life those characters and any, and any of my characters in my mind, they bring them to life. So if they're watching, I love you guys. You're the best. Yes. If you're watching fantastic job, it was so, you know, sometimes you think, see makeup and you're like, Oh, they under it's underwhelming or it's too over. I mean, it, Look, it, it was so good. I almost thought people maybe had prosthetics on, but then I'm like, no, that is. And if they built from that and gave that look of, like I said, like almost like they were life size, you know, Barbie and Ken dolls. And it was just, it was amazing. It really brought the creep factor like <laughs> severely. Oh, thanks. And that's one of the ones that I'm like, cause we did it so quick. We shot it all in a day. And, what? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. It was the, it was, yes, I remember that. There was no budget really for it, just a little bit. So it was like, we only have a day to do it. And, but, and we got um, Jenna Canal in there from, uh, from Terrifier. She's okay. the lead. And Gigi Gustin. And uh, it's a, it's a good, it's a, it, it was great. But the guys at Mini World Studios who let us, uh, shout out to them too. They, they're incredible what they do with the miniatures and all that. It's incredible work. And they let us shoot there for, for free. They're, they're just, everyone supported us to, you know, to make it happen, which you know how it is. Like, yeah. it's all about, it's all about just everyone coming together. I'm only as good as the team I work with, honest. Well, that was a great project and we were really impressed. And I think one of the things I loved about it most too were the opening and closing credits with the, the miniatures and the, you know, going through the city and the cars and the train. And that was pretty sweet. I, I Amazing, really right? The little details on those figures, incredible. Many worlds. Yeah. Like, yeah, I know. I that wanted to look in there. It's like, this is so cool. That was um, awesome. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a little piece. Oh yeah, love the story. It was fun. Uh, and you know, yeah, it just it just leaves you with this wow. I mean, it, it reminded me of a, of a fun Twilight Zone uh, little short mm -hmm. episode. Uh, spooky, creepy, and just 
it, it was very impactful. Loved it. So. And I kind of like how you circled back with that true crime again, um, people disappearing and where do they go? So. Yeah, I know <laughs> that's a potential for a feature, right? It's like all the missing people in the world are all like put in this mini miniature world. Maybe we are missing from another place and we're in the miniature world now. Ooh, right. Everyone, See? Just, everyone just do this. <laughs> We're trying to solve our own mystery to get out, but we don't realize, you know, that we are actually Who the are you? you just became a Rubik's Cube in front of me. You just went. <laughs> yeah. So you guys are now starting to freak me out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> the camera just started doing a little zoom in on Audrey as she spoke. It was like, <laughs> like what's happening? Well, it'll be up to us to help everybody. They'll be like, they were the crazy ones and they were super into all the weird stuff. I'm like, yeah, the weird ones always come through and save the day. Because oh. we know. We know. Okay. Because we know. <laughs> we know. Okay. We know. Hey, 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 we spent all that time preparing for it and watching all the stuff, so we're ready. Yeah, we're so ready. Especially you guys. You guys watch so many films all the time, I bet. Constantly. Yeah. So I appreciate uh, you guys enjoying it. Thank you. There's something wrong with us, apparently. Um, I, the amount of blood, guts, gore, um, you know, hair being pulled out, fingernails, toenails. Um, and then it's also the sci-fi. And, and what I love about um, PopCon and our um, format here is we get a little bit of everything. We get the horror, we get the sci-fi, we get the thrillers, we get the fan films, we get, I mean, it's so much fun. So all of those things that we love are in this whole like nice little, that's not even a box. I can't say it's in a box. It's just in this container of some sort, but it's all in there. So it's really nice to see those um, mixes of genres uh, in there. So it, it's a lot of fun, but yeah, the, the, the amount of insane things that we have seen. <laughs> yeah, we got options. That was yeah nice. <laughs> exactly. I don't know. Um, I don't, for, for us, it just makes us feel, I don't know. I need that to start my day. I'm like, we're well, ready. <laughs> <laughs> Someone says, hey, I know him. That is a Brian Donahue. Uh, Brian. Oh, Brian uh, is a, one of our, one of the members of our of our team. He's incredibly talented. He works on the uh, yeah, Brian. And, and, and the art, he works on the art department. In a lot of my work. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Yeah, um, I do want to um, if it's OK with you, we also watched. Um, Jeez, I am so sorry. I'm having a serious brain lapse. This light is so hot. <laughs> I'm telling you, this is I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it's for tans. It's like by the, time, by, the the, by the time the interview's over, George is going to be all. He's going to look like he's going to look like us. He, oh yeah, oh yeah. I'm going to have you. He I'm needs have it. A nice tan. Yeah, I, he, I do. I he, do. I heard a tan commercial on the radio the day when I was going to the store, and I just kind of giggled to myself, and it's like. It's about that time, man, for you to start like helping that color come through because before you know it, you'll, you'll be all burned. The snow can give me a sunburn. That is true. Uh, um, I'm sorry, want... George. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you don't mind, um, I know sometimes it can be a sensitive topic um, for people that have been in the military, but I wanted to know if you would like to discuss at all. Um, the movie we um, watched last night, it's... Uh, sp uh, you just now told we're me. Both, uh, uh, I know uh, you had just told me. Um, uh, spine. Um, oh, well, it was it was originally Railway Spine, but... Uh, Railway Spine, thank it you. Got, it, it got changed to Battle Scars, like, throughout the process. But, battle uh, Scars, yes, yes, yeah. yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, gosh, uh, I don't know. What do you guys want to know? Um, I just didn't know if you wanted to talk a little bit about that. Um, one of the things we notice is like even though you're known more for horror you have this whole like you know repertoire of movies that are not the same but yet they can kind of play upon the same themes um i like how you handled that topic of showing the worst case scenario of um what happens to people um or what can happen to people after being in the military. And I don't think it really matters. Um, Even trauma, period. Trauma, yeah. exactly, is is trauma. Um, anything you want to talk about with your experience filming that movie and what it meant to you to make that movie? Well, you know, I, I actually, it's sad to say this, but it's like, I've actually like just kind of disowned that film just a little bit because, um, a little bit because I, sh I shot that film 
before 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 film school ten years ago. Mm -hmm. So that movie's ten years old, and it just it just came out last year. Oh wow! Okay. So if you look at that film and then look at my work now, it's just it's an entirely different filmmaker. It's an, it like, is. I I will agree with completely that. Completely agree. But yeah. that's where you know the where the progress has gone gone, and that's what I love about. Um, watching filmmakers and seeing um, their work at different stages. I mean, I, because I feel like we all go through different things and different stages of our lives. And it depends also maybe what was going on then, what's going on now, but the progression and I mean, but you've always had an eye for cinematography. So I'm not going to take that away from you at all. You oh, can still see it. in that first film, your eye. And we both said that when we were watching it last night. Oh, thank you. I appreciate you guys watching. I, w I, I wish, uh, so what had happened with that film is like, we shot it for zero, very little, no money at all. I was still in the military. This was before film school, 10 years ago. I had no filmmaking education. I just kind of, I wanted to make a film. And like most people, they like most, like 90% of people out here, they think it's easy. Mm -hmm. And they try to make a movie without understanding the fundamentals, which is everything has to start with the page. You need a solid story before you start anything. It's like, would you start building a house without the foundation? Right. Would you, would you start? Would you start working on the pipes and the flooring and everything without talking about the blueprint first? Mm -hmm. Everyone likes to jump to that first, and then before you know it, you have a a teepee that collapses with a tornado, and that's most movies out there. You know, it's I didn't have that education. And I just jumped in. I was like, and I couldn't have made it any difficult. It's like, yeah, I don't have any experience, but I want to make the next deer. <laughs> But uh, I love that you went for a feature your first time. I mean, I, I got to say, say, it takes cojones to, you know, to just go, go I'm going to do it. But you did it. That's that's the whole point. We, you did, we, it. We did it. Yeah, we, we did it. And, it, and, and it, there were really good aspects of that movie. Don't, don't, don't beat yourself up too much because like, <laughs> you watch a lot of movies and we have seen movies from people that have done 10 or 15 movies and still couldn't make something that cohesive. So... Oh. Honestly, I, I I see your point. I, I totally understand what you're saying. Yeah, you, I just, looking I've at yourself in in and looking at yourself now, it's a stark difference. It is. I hate looking at it. I'm like, no. But to be to be fair, there is a director's cut out there which 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 ran the festival circuit and it won multiple awards. And that's the film that I stand by. I'm proud of that film because that's that was my first. That film taught mm -hmm. me everything. It taught me how to work with my actors. It taught me how to um, how to tell a story with my camera, how to deal with problems, how to get out of pitfalls. Mm -hmm. Every, it was film school. That film was film school for me. So mm -hmm. when I actually went to film school, I was ready. I was like dodging bullets. I, I went, <laughs> I, I went, for, I literally went to the Iraq war and went to the military so I can go to film school. So I went to war. I made a film before film school. So by the time I got to film school, I was like, who's, who's, come on, let's go. Who's ready? Let's do this. <laughs> I'm ready. And everyone's like, whoa, what's going on? I was like, I'm here to, to dance. You yeah. Know? And I have tools in my pocket ready to go. But so that film, it finally got released like years later. And uh, I'm proud of it because it won multiple awards. But when it got distribution, we didn't know what we were doing. And we just gave it to a company that, you know, they just kind of, they altered the director's cut. They changed everything that made it artistic and beautiful. And they made it very generic, the version that you saw, mm -hmm. sadly. But the director's cut is like literally 40, 30 minutes longer. That's a lot of footage to cut out. And it was a lot of story in there. We needed a lot of that. So I'm proud of that first film. It, it, I'm happy with it. But the film that actually got released, I'm like, oh, God, no. Um, but maybe maybe the director's cut will be released one day, maybe. You know, awesome. I, That's I, fair. I, 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 and, I, I, and I just know that, you know, personally speaking, you know, you were personally speaking maybe for some of that and your experience and what you've, you know, everybody doesn't have that experience. So when someone makes a movie about something they've experienced, you got to trust it. And, you know, you got to, you know, be opened up to, to what you're watching. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I was, you know, it was, it comes from a personal experience, you know, like my, my time in the war and the military. And I wanted, uh, I wanted to tell a story um, about, you know, I, I used to walk around New York, uh, it's such an inspiring city. And I would see a lot of soldiers, ex soldiers, Vietnam vets, freezing to death on mm -hmm. the streets. And I'm like, how did that guy probably started, was a young man at one point with dreams, hopes, 
aspirations to be great, to do something good with his life? How did he go from that to nobody giving a, 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 anything about you and right. freezing it up in the corner? How did that happen? That's the story. And I wanted, to, I wanted to find that. So I dug deep and we went into it, even without filmmaking education or experience. I was like, I have a story to tell. I want to experience it. So um, I, it's, it's definitely in the director's cut. So I would love for you guys to see that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Send it to us. We'd love to watch it. And that's it. exactly what Brian had just said. He was just like, you know, that he loved the uh, the punch and the gutness uh, of that film. He was just like, yeah, for the director's oh, cut. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, it's way different than what was released. And uh, one day people will see that. But but the fact that it was made 10 years ago and then released this year, oh, my God. I'm like, no, because people people don't know. People don't know it was shot that long ago. They right. just today. And I was like, no, that's not me anymore. But it was my foundation. The foundation that I preach on, that was my foundation. So I'm built. I've built on that, and I'm thankful. Yep, and and it's evident. And um, oh yeah, because we've watched your, you know, seeing your progression of your work, uh, you know, from being able to see what you've done within these last, you know, so many years. Uh, and, and I love, I love watching that. I'm like, oh, when when was this? I'm like, let's go in order. I'm like, you know, I want to make sure that I'm seeing things in order, and then I can see. It's just like, oh. You know, you made this little tweak here. Oh, I improved over here in this area. It's just like my cinematography is better. My sound is better. It's just like, you know, oh, uh, let me make sure that my, my lighting is even better in this one. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like Springfield 3. I'm like, wow. You know, for that being, um, you know, your most recent work that's out right now, right? Uh, that's the, uh, beside, you know, the, you know, the, uh, 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 the uh, battle scars. Uh, that was, you know, being your oldest work uh, recently out, but your newest work that's actually been out, that is the Springfield 3, is that right? Springfield 3, Miniature, and, uh, well, I've done several music videos in the past. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, we saw those, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah well, Pop, you Papa can... Roach, Escape the Fate, you know, some great some great, band, some great bands and musicians, uh, um, and a couple of music videos that haven't been released yet that are coming out in the next few months. So oh, nice. that's a lot of my recent work. And I just co-directed a feature film that's going to be coming out this year as well. Yes. We'll are talk about that. And then, about and then, that and then, and then gonna, say again. Are you able to talk about that at all? Oh, uh, no, I can't. I can't say too much about that film just yet. The fact but I will say this, it's going to it's going to it's going to kick ass. If I can say that it's it's it has everyone in that film from like. Some some members from Motley Crue all the way up the line. He's got some great rock and roll members in that. That movie's gonna. Nice. It's, it's all rock and roll. It's rock and roll and horror. If it had a baby. Ah, uh, nice. see, you're talking my language. You're talking my language. Now, now it is on IMDb, so we can at least say the title, right? It's, uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, called, it's called the Retaliators. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> no, no. I want you to say it, George. <laughs> oh, the Retaliators. Yes. Every time you say it, like a like a everyone feels something. Like, oh, he said it. Oh, um, deep in the gut, deep yeah, in the gut. Yeah, for sure. No, it's going to be a fun movie. It was, uh, it was, it was, uh, I've, we've been working on it this past year and uh, it was an incredible crew, great team, great producers, great company on board. And uh, it's, it's, it's got some of the strongest performances that I've directed with uh, awesome. Jacoby Shaddix from Papa Roach um, as a, as a serial killer in that film. Nice. Um, cool. And uh, I'm just, I'm going to be, I'm going to be very, Excited to see that release because there's a great team, a lot of lot of incredibly talented people on board. So, is it going awesome. to pos Is it going to be possibly theatrical, or can, do you know that yet? Or I know that they're definitely aiming for a for a theatrical release for sure, and it'll be on all the on, you know on VOD everywhere. That they're going full full fledged with that. Awesome. awesome. I don't know what else I can say. So but. far, so far, it's scheduled. You know, uh, we we see that it's scheduled for June. Uh, so hopefully, that can maintain. Uh, that same, you know, date or the same time. So, you know, we don't have too many months to wait. No, 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 not too long. I, I know that they, they have an incredible editor on board um, uh, that, that uh, I, I don't know I'm allowed to say, so I won't say, but they, uh, he's edited some incredible films. They got the guys that scored Stranger Things. They're scoring it. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. So now you're gonna have to, since you can't talk a lot about it, you're yeah. going to have to come back and talk to us when it's released. Yeah, yeah, we're getting close. So once I get the the green light to talk more about it, I'll definitely give you a call. Um, yeah, that'd be that'd be great. Just you know, bring a couple of people with you. We we'll have a great time. Yeah, for sure. I'll call you water directly. I'll have the Zodiac voice, you know, to keep you out of <laughs> I'll be like, Sam, is this you? 
<laughs> trying to scare me at 3 a.m. <laughs> I make very random middle, middle of the night calls. So there's that film. And then I just directed one more short film, which I I really told myself no more short, no more short films, but this one was very special to me. Uh, it's in post-production now. Uh, it's definitely the most powerful short I've done to date. Wow. Uh, also have it's a I sent you guys a trailer, I think. I don't know if you, you saw did. It. You did. Yes. Yeah, it's called And Batman. we're excited about that as well. <laughs> I'm so it looks I'm so proud of this piece and also an incredible team on board based on a true story. And um, it's just it's a very exciting story and I can't wait for people to see it. Um, how can when it is done, how are people going to be able to see it? Well, we're going to it's going to hit the festival circuit for sure. Okay. This film because we're we're campaigning for an Oscar nomination for this piece. Nice. So that's we're, we're, we're aiming for the fence on this. It one. looks beautiful. I mean, watching mm -hmm. the trailer. I, it, it doesn't even seem like it's gonna be a short film. The, it, the trailer is so rich and so, you, it's just, it, it was good. It was it was very good. Got me very um, like, well, I wanna watch this. And when can we watch it? Let, make sure we ask them about it. <laughs> I, wish we, I wish we could pop it up right now so people could see what we're talking about. Cause it's, uh, you know if what? you wanna see the trailer, go to my Vimeo and look at the trailer for that night. It's if we that. were more technically savvy and had thought about that, we should have been prepared for that. <laughs> Exactly. We, we would just play it right here as we're as we're sitting. We're talking about it. Yeah, we're gonna set that up next time. Yes, we will and, work on, and we that. will throw it on our on, on the um, popcom page and our personal pages and the Instagrams and all that. Oh, too. Thank, we you. Can, thank you. We can do that for sure. Since yeah. we suck on the technical. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. I'd rather see you guys anyway. But yeah, put, like share it if you'd like. It's called That Night. It's a psychological horror drama because I love hybrids, and it's based on a true story that went viral eight years ago, and it's like. It's it's this movie's gonna let people remember what this is about. So it's very exciting. I don't want to talk too much about it, but let the trailer speak for itself. But it's coming out soon. It's in post. It is gonna be out this year in the festival circuit. Awesome. That sounds amazing. Um, let's see. I feel like I had something else, and now I'm there's something I'd really because oh, we yeah. talked to you uh back at oh, Horror Hound, oh, yeah. and you mentioned it, and I didn't know if you could possibly talk a little bit more about it. And it was about Little Bastard uh, for the Ooh. movie Little Darling. Oh, gosh. Okay. So, all right. So, we're going there, huh? Yeah. Going, hey, like it's it. on IMDb. We figured we were safe. <laughs> well, and I knew, it, I knew at that time you couldn't talk about it, and you, but you yeah. were able to just mention about what it was about. Yeah. And I was just like, all right, cool. Now it's on IMDb. And I'm like, can he talk about it? I'm like, because that would be really awesome if you can give us a little bit of tidbit of information. That'd be I can talk a little bit about it, but not much. But that is my baby. It is my passion project. It is the film I've been wanting to make forever. And it's going to be the film that's like, I'm, I, I, I hope people will remember me by. That's how much it means to me. Awesome. And uh, it, is, um, it is about the car that killed James Dean. And it's set, it's set 25 years after his death, surrounding a group of friends that find the car. And they're one particular, one particular character. Uh, I don't want to give too much away, but uh, his basically his obsession to rebuild it and his descent into madness and what takes place involving himself and the conspiracy surrounding the car, which a lot of people don't know about. It's linked to like several murders and deaths even after yep. James. It's not just yep. him. Yeah. You know, so in a way, it's almost like a modernized, like retelling, unofficial sequel to Christine, but not mm -hmm. anywhere related. But because Christine's fictional, it's a lot of fun. But this is like grounded in like a mythology. yeah. I mean, this is real life, real life aspects. I mean, this has been something that's been floated around for decades. Yeah, and uh, depending on you know people that have actually been in the even around it that people have gone on record of saying, hey, that they've refused to get in the car, that they're not, that like, they felt the vibe. And for me, I'm like, they had to be an empath because we empaths, when something comes up that doesn't feel right, we're like, yeah, no. Or, and there's been times where we were gonna get on the elevator. I'm like, yeah, I'm not getting on that right now. You know, or just weird things that happen. And so I totally, you know, I can't wait to see this. I'm so, okay, so you know that he, we're in the same state. He's like where he was born and raised is like an hour and a half from us. Well, it's not even that far quite. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah. So if you were ever to make it to Indiana, 
we'd be happy to accompany you there or get, you know, there's a whole James Dean Museum, there's everything, you know, set up. It, it, it's, you know, it, it's really cool. They, it gets yeah. a lot of visitors. Well, that's amazing. Well, we're going to be visiting it soon, actually, because um, I we just got word from you know my investors that we are actually shooting the film this year. We're actually I'm actually directing this film this year. Um, the script is eight out of ten on the blacklist. It's um, I'm so nice. proud of the script. I'm so proud of the team that we're bringing on board. And now they're connecting the film with a with a uh, with a with a, basically a, a, a mini series. Uh, based on the true story of it. Uh, so you're going to see that. Oh, eventually. I'm going to faint. I'm going to faint right now. George, get behind me and catch me. <laughs> it's going to happen. It's going to be like, yeah, like, because there's so much of that going on right now. There's a lot of like, like we watch a lot of true crime, a lot of like, you know, um, the, the, the new one that they made about the, the whore at the Cecil house, at the uh, hotel and all that. Like, oh yeah. Oh my God. All that stuff is incredibly done. And so we're going to have a chance to explore using that format with That's the exciting. Curse of Little Bastard. Yeah. People need to know this story. People don't remember that this actually happened. Like, and it's still, the Porsche is still murdering people to this day. Like, it's really scary. I don't know who would want it. I don't know why <laughs> Brian says he will drive it to the set every day. He's <laughs> probably in right now. <laughs> Brian was going to work on the movie. Yeah. I know. Don't come to the set. <laughs> Dude, you might just want to, you know, bike, Uber. I don't know, walk. <laughs> would you it, drive it? If you had the opportunity, would you drive it? I think I think um, I I probably would just to just to experience what James Dean probably experienced on his last ride and just feel it out. But I would definitely be like wearing like a a body suit bubble. I'm like, when is this going to explode? Flame retardant suit and bubble wrap. <laughs> yeah, I would look. Yeah, bubble. I would look like uh, like a like a like a, a test dummy with a <laughs> oh, test dummy. Yeah. I'm like, this is going to happen. Uh, <laughs> Hopefully not, but uh, yeah, I mean, even even Paul Walker sadly passed away in a Porsche. You know that it's been going, it's been it's been a cons consistent curse since 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 his dreadful last ride. So yeah, um, you know, so this film is going to explore that. It's going to explore the conspiracy. It's going to explore where the curse came from. Um, it's going to be a ride, no pun intended. It's a really fun ride, and it's set in 1981. So it's gonna it's gonna be sexy it's gonna have fun characters it's gonna have an awesome score it's gonna it's oh, just gonna, it's everything it's like everything cult status wrapped in a ball and i can't wait to throw it on screen and explode it with some blood and just awesome rock and roll it's gonna be a fun movie see i love yes. the mix of the rock and rolling with the horror or metal like that 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 speaks to me so much so that that's pretty yeah. awesome i can't wait to see this movie and that's why i want to make it because i want to make movies that i really can't wait to see so it's gonna be fun that's the way to do it. Oh, yeah. And then lastly, I don't know if you can end up discussing <laughs> this, but Junkie Monster is... Uh, uh, I can't talk about Junkie Monster just yet, but I will say this. It is another feature that I've been wanting to make, also doing well um, as a script, uh, as an unproduced script, but it's uh, it's Requiem for a Dream if it was played backwards and if it were a horror movie. That's Junkie Monster. Well, damn. Take that. <laughs> Drop the mic. <laughs> Oh yeah, is this like so <laughs> my brain's gonna be scrambled by the time we're done? It's just like okay, <laughs> scrambled eggs. There's a lot brewing right now. If I was a witch, I'd be like, <laughs> you guys got or just wait to try my soup. <laughs> <laughs> There's so it. much coming. I'm so excited to share it with you guys because we have the best job in the world as storytellers, and it is the hardest job in the world because it takes a lot of money to make what we to, to do what we love to do and it takes takes time to be able to find a great team that will support you and to get the money to be able to do it. So we're finally, myself and the team are finally at that place where we can make our films the right way. So we're really excited about That's it. That's awesome. <laughs> That's what hard work, you know, does and perseverance and being a decent person to where you can make those connections and have those dependable people surround you. Um, you know, it comes when it's supposed to come. And I, you know, am so just stoked that, you know, we first, you know, we're able to see your films and just to see what you're doing and where you're going next. It all sounds amazing. We think you have a damn fine career um, ahead of you. And, you. you know, this is the part on our end where we love meeting people at a certain stage. You know, it's going to be like one day they're going to forget all about, you know, you know, 
these films and these film festivals and this and that, and they're going to go, you know, it's like, like mama, papa bear. You want them to go on to bigger, better things and to, you know, you want them to be a household name. You know what, when you say, oh, so, you know, Samuel Gonzalez, or have you seen this movie? Oh yeah, I've yeah. seen that. You know, it, it's, it's that excitement of seeing people at this stage. And it's like, oh man, I can't wait to see what they're going to do next and where they're going to go. And yeah, like Sam Raimi, he's a household name. It's just like everybody, you know, you, you mention his name. It's like, oh yeah, he did this, 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 this. And so, and he, and he had to, you know, he started out and was doing his thing. And now he's, well, you know, he's doing Dr. Strange too. Uh, he's, he can pretty much do whatever project that he wants. You know, he can, he, he gets his choice and gets to pick whatever he wants to play yeah, with. Absolutely. And to see, you know, uh, you know, guys like you and, and the, the road that you've traveled in. Uh, oh, and by the way, thank you so much for your service to the country. We really appreciate that too. Thank you. Um, thank you. But to see your work that you've done and, and how you've improved and how it's just amazing. Uh, you know, with this road that you've traveled has been nothing short of impressive. So thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for the support. It means so much to me. As I said earlier, uh, you know, I've been out in LA. I just passed my 10 year mark. I've been out in LA for 10 years last month. And, uh, and ever since we came, I came out here, it was literally like, and I, it's like, it's literally falling into the trenches. This is a very, it's a tough industry. It's a tough battle. And, um, but my mentor always used to tell me, you can't fly with eagles if you hang with turkeys. And, <laughs> and that always that's not something my dad would say just because you're like, wait, you have to think about it. Can't fly with, oh, okay, got you. you know? It makes so much sense because you can come out here to LA and you can fall in with the wrong camp. There's so many camps out there full of turkeys that think they can fly. Turkeys can't fly. Right. They spend so much time trying to do it. But we're you, talking about it. We're, we're talking, talking about it. it, thinking about flying. It's like you got to find a good camp. So really, like, I just thank you to everyone that I've met from day one in L.A. all the way to I am now. Everyone that I've like, partnered up with, befriended, everyone that came into my life, left my life. Everyone has been um, an incredible asset to where I'm at today. Um, we're all climbing a mountain and we all start that mountain naked with nothing but our bare hands. And every single one of us has different tools. And it's all about climbing together, using each other's tools to make it to the top. It is a family. So I will say this right now. I am where I'm at today and I'm continuing to climb because of the people that are beside me. It's all about the team. So would you say that's pretty much your your uh, most important aspect of, of filmmaking is building those relationships? Because that's what it seems like, you know, after talking to you. Oh, absolutely. It's all about relationships. You might lose some along the way, but seriously, like. I use the mountain metaphor. Keep climbing because that guy is going to have some rope. That guy is going to have some food. This yeah. girl is going to have a, a pickaxe and you need everyone to do it. I mean, I have the vision. I have the ideas and the story, but none of that can come to fruition without the rest of these tools. So we need each other. We need each other yeah. to climb. And that's you know? with anything, you know, and I don't think people appreciate that sentiment enough. I am a very stubborn person. Like it takes me forever to ask for help. Like, AI has been kicking my ass lately and <laughs> I, I am not a technical person. I can be the brains of the operation. I can do all the administrative. I, there is a lot I can do that I will pat myself on the back, but what I do not do is tech. And so I've really had to depend on the people around me that can, that can do that, <laughs> you know, and ask for help or say, I got this far this is your foray. Can you help me with this? And it takes a lot, but man, when you have those people around you that you know that you can go to and you can support each other and they're always in your corner and have your back, there's just nothing like that feeling of, you know, having that dependability and that foundation of, oh, stability. That's it. The foundation of stability. Absolutely. It's all about that, seriously. And when people realize that, because it's a cutthroat industry, everyone wants to just like, kick everybody off the boat, like my boat, my boat. But if you guys were to just stick together and yep. you can build your own boat and you can make yep. it go faster than the other boats, if you just work together, yep. you know? it's all about team. It really is, you know, um, it, it really is about And community. I love that you expressed that so eloquent, eloquently um, because I mean, it's true. <laughs> it's it's true. You, sometimes true. You, you meet the Spielbergs in the world that have an elevator that just push a button and take you to the top. Some people like to climb and then just wait for the helicopter to come for a favor. 
the helicopter never comes. You're going to freeze to death on that mountain. It never comes. You have to just keep climbing with your team, you know? And uh, so make your own elevator. That's my advice to any filmmaker that's coming out here. Build your own elevator. Build your right. own stairs. You heard it from yeah. Samuel. Yeah, Almost literally damn. called you Samuel <laughs> Jackson. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll take it. Oh he's like, I'll take it, mother. <laughs> oh, oh my God. I mean, he's a little tanner than me, but we look alike. I don't well because we we frequently reference him in this house. I mean, I will say MF and then just laugh because I'm like, oh, I sounded like Samuel L. Jackson when I just said that. You know, because you know, that unfortunately that I, I do have a very potty mouth, but you know, I try to keep it really you? I do. I'm going to totally blame. I will not throw my mother under the bus for anything except for my language. You're going to blame your mom for your bad mouth. That's awesome. Oh, oh, yeah. oh yeah. Oh, oh, her mom. Her her mother is an artist. I mean, she, that works. Oh yeah, she will meld words oh, together, gosh. and it's it's just a beautiful fabric of just profanity, vulgarity, and profanity. Awesome. I love it. That's awesome. I just I see a portrait. Oh you gotta God. you gotta paint you gotta paint your mom one day and just just have oh. oh oh she's awesome. hilarious. Like I was over there a couple of days ago with her and my dad, and I just was sitting there working doing film fest stuff, and I'm just over there trying to ignore them. But then I just started laughing, and she just stops in the middle of fussing and goes, "What are you laughing at?" And I'm like, "Uh, you." And she goes, well, "What was funny?" I go, "Well, first you." <laughs> and then she's like, I didn't say that. And I'm like, Mom, you literally just said all of these things. Oh, I didn't think I said that. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you, you curse so much or say such, you know, horrible things sometimes you forget. But it's always comedy. I mean, of and course. even my dad laughs sometimes when he, he she's fussing at him because it's just funny. It's just, she's she's a mess. Well, mom, moms are the best that way. I'm going to shout out to my mom, too. Shout Love out mom. to your Yes. Hey. Thank you for making such a creative, awesome son that loves blood, guts, gore, and true crime. We love it. She's like, what? <laughs> he does what? <laughs> no, 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 no. no she's so actually, now so is the part of the show where we move into getting to know Samuel Gonzalez Jr., not Samuel L. Jackson, a little better. <laughs> you heard it. Sure. Okay. Give it to Are me. you ready, kind sir? Yeah, I'm ready. I'm just ready. Little rapid fire questions duh, duh, and stuff. Uh, does that have to be like too. a buzzer or something, or do I just? Nah, nah, nah. We're just gonna uh, just throw some stuff. No, no, no. Here. Wait, wait. No, okay. if you take more than five seconds, I'm gonna gong you. I need. We need like a little thing right here so we can gong. Oh, that's not a bad idea. Um, I know, right? We'll just try to find one. Goodwill trip. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are gonna start advancing. You're like, oh yeah, no problem. If you get it wrong, we're gonna buzz you. We're gonna chop you. <laughs> As a matter of fact, we're going to send you a collar ahead of time until. We <laughs> yeah. Where's this going? Love it. I mean, that sounds like a movie. Look, hmm. <laughs> you know, since people like to talk so much crap on social media, <laughs> let's put it to the test. <laughs> let's, do it right now. <laughs> let's play a game. <laughs> okay. Rapid first, fire. I'm ready. fire. Favorite board game? Ooh, uh, Clue. Nice. Favorite childhood cartoon? Uh, I'd have to say, gosh, I'm not sure. How much time do I have? Five seconds. Oh, <laughs> gosh. Uh, gosh, favorite cartoon? Uh, I don't remember. Probably, uh, Hey Arnold. Okay, cool. Nice. Yeah, Very, so. I love football head, Hey Arnold. Football head, right? <laughs> Just like them. Hey, they don't make cartoons like that anymore. Those had like real messages. We really yeah. connected with those. You know? At the yeah, end yeah. of every episode, there was like a moral. Yeah. They don't make them like that anymore. No. They don't. They're they're so beneath us and our kids sometimes. Yeah. I'm just like, what is this? Yeah, now there's now they're just empty of any kind of heart and soul that they used to be. So. No, I think it's just colors and bright lights. They're like, look over here. But our cartoons yeah. that story. I mean, God, we're getting old for us to say, like, back in my day, hey Arnold. <laughs> <laughs> I fully admit to being old and shit is different now. And I love it. You know, I oh, yeah. love, you know, like we can go back and we just we were watching Thundercats, the other, the new Thundercats the other night. And uh, I'm like, man, why did you put put this particular episode on? And it was of like a really heartfelt, just, it was Song of the Peddlers. And it was just this incredibly 
deep episode. And I'm like, oh man. And so I'm sitting there trying to work on AI as I'm already frustrated because Adobe is holding me at that point. And it's just like dog walking <laughs> me around the living room as I'm trying to do it. And then he puts that on and I'm like, oh man, I'm all sentimental. But yeah, they don't, they don't, they don't do them like they used to. They, they, what, what you know about AI? They don't know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they, don't, they don't. Okay. What's heavily played on your playlist? Um, I'd say like scores because I write a lot to scores. Um, but I listen to a lot of like, I don't know, Jimmy Eat World, Alkaline Trio. Okay. These are like my favorite, my, my favorite top two bands of all time. Okay, good to know. And yeah. uh, you know, because you love to play guitar. Uh, what are your top three guitarists of all time? Oh gosh, <clears throat> actually, I wouldn't say like I have a favorite guitarist. It's like asking me what my favorite film is. Like I can't say that. I, I go off like favorite directors. So again, I'll go back to like favorite bands or something like that. Which, which is about like, if you guys read my or know about my book, it's about my experience in the Iraq War, starting a rock and roll band over there. I don't know if you know that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, that's a true story too. So music's a big part of my life, but I can't say favorite guitarist. I'd say favorite bands because I play every, just about every instrument. Oh, wow. Yeah. Impressive. And so oh, everybody awesome. out there that's, that's watching this, uh, mm -hmm. make sure you check out uh, Samuel's book, The Chords of War. Uh, check it out. Great book. It's going to be a series soon too. So. What are you not doing? Okay. So yeah, we have some brewing right? action. There's some brewing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll Apparently every three months we're just gonna have to have a Samuel check-in. So we just need to book you every three months so we can do a check-in and see what's going on because you've got a lot going on and I'm really excited about it. So I mean that it just keeps getting better. So mm -hmm. if you can't name guitars, what about favorite animated film? Favorite animated film? <clears throat> I'd say oh gosh, because I like them all, but I'd say probably my favorite one was, you know, the little shorts that played before the Pixar movies. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there was, there was one that had to do with um, a little kid and the ball, a ball and uh, all the, a little kid in, in, inside of a recess when everyone goes into recess and there's, there's all these toys littered around. Have you guys seen that one? I'm, I'm pretty sure I have. I, I'm trying to remember if that was at the beginning of a, uh... Was it up? Was that the? I think, I think it was before The Incredibles two. I think, or I don't oh, remember what it was. But it, it's a short. It's a short. It's only like ten minutes or less. But <clears throat> I felt like that was like the most powerful animated film I'd oh, ever seen, wow. and it had so much to do with like your childhood, but also forgiveness. And um, I don't know, it moved me the most. But check out the Pixar shorts. Those are like my favorites. They're the best storytellers on the planet. Oh, they are. Definitely, yeah, they, definitely. Great tear jerkers. Love it. <laughs> they just get it. They just really get it. You know, they, they do. They, they send that emotional, uh, that emotional, uh, you know, feeling home and yeah, good stories, uh, heartfelt stories, deep stories, lessons for everyone to, you know, to incorporate into their lives that they put into each and every film. So, yeah, it's almost like those, those, those cartoons that we grew up with, those guys grew up to, to be Pixar like writers and, yeah, they're just so good, and they're so oh. universal. I love those films. Any Pixar film is my favorite animated film, but I'd say the sh the short no, respect the shorts, the shorts are so powerful, and those guys are going to go on to do features. But um, Pixar to me is the best storytellers, and I think Monsters University is my favorite animated feature. Okay, nice, okay, cool. You know why? Because it has to do with underdogs and what you have to go through to become. Yeah, that you've always felt that you can become. So I can relate to that. We can all relate to that. Absolutely. Yeah. Agreed. Oh, I just remembered while I was on the while I was on this with you. Like, <laughs> <"Hey>, drop. <laughs> uh, uh, so, uh, what book had the greatest impact on you? I'd say uh, Catcher in the Rye. Okay. Right, cool. Yeah, Catcher. Um, I've read it like five times. Five times. Yeah. Oh, you read it five times? Yeah, that's a conspiracy oh, wow. too, that book. You know about that book? The conspiracy behind Catching the Rye? You should know this, Audrey. I don't, I don't know. know. No. I don't you know. You don't know about it? Every every like assassin ever has had like hundreds of yeah. copies of that book in their house. <laughs> and they and they keep thinking that there's a there's a there's a secret chapter in the book. Like, a, or a code in there or something's coded in it. Yes, 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 yeah. I do. 
it's a really, it's an, it's an incredibly written novel. It's beautiful, but it's amazing how like the novelist kind of went into hiding and obscurity after he wrote that. It's almost like, I don't know, this is all a conspiracy, but it's kind of interesting to think that like maybe he knew what he was doing or he was hired to write the book, but now he's like ashamed from it. You can, that's a whole feature right there. Like the, 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 the actual conspiracy behind Catcher in the Rye and all the, uh, all the influential artists that were assassined in the first, in the turn of the 20th century, how it was connected to that book. It's trippy, right? Oh, yeah. And this is how it starts. Well, I mean, and a, and a lot of those conspiracies, they're brought, they're born out of, because people are seeing patterns, they're seeing some kind of consistency. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, hey, there's a link here and it should be checked out. And if it's not being checked out, people will create, you know, what they believe it could be. And they're going to do their own investigations, which I think is good because it spotlights some issue that is not being addressed. And so I always say there's always some truth to rumor. Rumors usually just don't start or even when they do, they're born of something. So there's always a little truth. I mean, there's different sides. There's the middle. There's the truth. There's this person's per perspective, that person's. And then somewhere in the middle, you can meet for what, you know, it really is. Yeah, there's something there that's true. It's like urban legends. It's like, yeah, we all have that. We all have that that boyfriend, girlfriend couple in high school that were murdered out in like the wood. We all have that story in our town, but that's all based on urban folklore is all based on some type of truth. Something happened there that is real. We, it's just like the telephone game. We've passed it along so much. It's turned into this like horrific, scary tale, but it all stems from some type of true reality. So that's what makes a conspiracy so great. It's like, we can't prove it. They're just interesting to- Exactly, well, agreed, agreed. agreed. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have more? Oh, you're next. Oh, so I'm next, right? okay. Um, me, this may be an easy one. I don't know. Best way to handle stress? Uh, best way to handle stress is to make a movie. Okay. Make a movie because that causes more stress, which in turn bounces it out. Cancels it out? It, out. <laughs> <laughs> it cancels it out. Uh, dive into work. Yeah, I like to. I like to watch films and make films if I'm stressed. Like, in fact, I think I need to make films at all times or projects at all times to alleviate any type of stress. But then they also cause stress, so it's a oh, tornado. Yeah. Well, that's healthy stress. You know, it's just like you're, there's definitely those two different things. That's definitely healthy stress. Um, yeah. Oh, so play with my golden retriever, which he's looking at me right now. <laughs> <laughs> you guys want to see him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Here we come, Let me go. Oh, there you go. Oh, hi, buddy. Oh, he's so cute. Aww. This is Kubi. He's very camera shy because now he doesn't want to look. But he's look. like, Dad, don't you're embarrassing <laughs> me. <laughs> See, uh, this is Kubi. Normally we have cats in our lap, but we had to lock them up because they like be up here in the screen, look, you know, just oh being yeah. Cats, cats love to hit the keys. They love it. Oh yeah, that that would be an interesting uh, end, and then needing to reboot back up, and <laughs> yeah, that'd be fun. <laughs> um, duct tape thing says, "Oh, this is Caitlin." Caitlin says hi, and she says, "Oh, I miss him." Now, Caitlin, do you miss him or do you miss the dog? Oh, thank thank you for missing me. Are you talking about you? You got a fan? She might be talking about him. But... <laughs> you got a fan, Kubi? No, she said his, his name is Kubi, oh. but it's short, it's short for Kubrick. Nice. Oh, nice. Yeah. Very nice. Never, He's a never really Does he have Google. that like shy face? Like, I want you to hold <laughs> me, but I don't want to be on camera. I uh, know. Look how gentle. He's so gentle. This guy is nine oh, years see, old. Oh, see, she said the dog. <laughs> oh, thank you. So she's just calling me the dog. Got it. Thanks. <laughs> she misses you both. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah. Cooper just winked too. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> this is my body. That's the best. 10 All out right. of 10. All right. Uh, so uh, the next one, uh, what advice would you give your younger self if you could uh, talk to you? How young? <laughs> uh, I'm going to say 10. 10? Ten. 10 years old? Yeah, 10 years oh. old. I'd be like, run. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> run, run while you still can. Um, I'd say... Because I would say, I would tell him to hold on, like, uh, hold, hold on, man. Um, hang on tight. Because at 10 years old, I was, uh, I was, I had a lot of bullying going on in my life. I was, I was very bullied when I was a kid. That's a, that's a, that's a horrible thing. Kids are, and I think they're getting, it's getting worse. 
bullying is a is a horrible situation going on in our world today. And uh, and I was a, I was I was massively bullied when I was a kid because I was the only child, and um, <clears throat> I was very innocent. So ten years old, I was definitely I had a great childhood, but I was definitely bullied. So I would go I would definitely talk to that kid and be like, Hey, man, just keep watching Back to the Future. You're gonna be you're gonna be uh, Marty McFly one day, man. Just just keep nice. going. You know, which oh, is true. Yeah. Which is true because when I got back from Iraq, I bought myself a DeLorean. So that did come true. <laughs> nice. What? Yep. I bought a DeLorean. I had to have it. That's awesome. Do you still have it? Well, here's what happened. I had it for like a few years. I loved it so much because it was my dream car. And then I stopped at a red light once and it caught on fire. And the ambulance and the fire trucks came to rescue me, but they ended up taking pictures with the car. And I'm like, I'm okay. <laughs> I'm okay. <laughs> But they just wanted to take pictures with it. So it's anyway, like, hey, I just, I'm, I'm over here. Yeah, I was like, I, thank you, thank you. Uh, they they came to take my car and uh, and and not really care about me. If it was a movie, yeah. I was left on the side of the road, and it just the car gets and all I'm just left in the dust, and they but take my car. Car was really cool though, and <laughs> well, I'm sorry, your car was really cool. <laughs> so I I gave the car I had to give the car up because it was just it was like it's the most it's the coolest car in the world. It's the sexiest looking car ever, but it's oh, the yeah. worst designed car. Like you can hear pieces and nuts and bolts falling out of that car <laughs> as we drive. It would never be a time machine. That was a lie. It makes me think <laughs> of that episode of the Goldbergs when the uncle has the DeLorean and it's just like stuff's happening to it. The door won't go up or go down or, you know, just, and I think that's one of the things you can hear things tinkling around and that was pretty funny. Oh, yeah. I love that. Yeah. That's exactly. Oh, yeah. That's a great show. Yeah, it was exactly like that. So yeah. Anyway, to go back to that, I'd say, hang on, brother. You're gonna have a DeLorean one day. <laughs> it's gonna be awesome. And awesome. Uh, and next time a bully messes you, kick him in the. I'm just kidding. I wouldn't tell him that. <laughs> no, I, that, <laughs> I'm with I'm with you there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was. Hey, a, I grew up just fine, thanks to my awesome parents. They were just they were the best. So. Which is awesome. See, I I. I I wish I could have been a little nicer. I'm not going to say nicer. I just, re I just reacted very badly to bullying and got in a lot of trouble, but it's okay. Well, look, you turned out cool already. You're cool. Thank you. Bullies, bullies going to be bullies and you just got to, you know, find a way to out bully the bully yeah. and see that goes back to my mom and having the mouth that she did. So <laughs> a lot of times things didn't result in a lot of physical action because I think people were more, more scared of what was going to come out of my mouth than anything. So, I mean, sometimes that really deters people when you can just rip them up in like two sentences. And I, I, wish, I wish I could have been like that. I wish I could have been. I was, I was very timid when I was a kid. I just had my dad. My dad's like a Terminator. You'd be like, who messed with you? And then you just, you just hear the Terminator sound. Yeah. Like, dun, 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 dun. Like, it's cool. It's cool. It, it, no, it's, he's fine. He didn't do anything. It's okay. He didn't. He didn't punch me. He he just you know <laughs> threw a rock or you know I don't want you to go and like totally rip this kid in half. Yeah, I don't know what what, what my dad would do in the school because he would come back home and he was like, yeah, you're not going to that school anymore. I'm like, did you? What happened to that school? <laughs> what did you do in the school? <laughs> but see, that's the kind of parents you want. Ones that will always you know stand up for you and have your back and go you know go to bat for you. So, oh, hundred percent. My parents always had my back. They were like, that's awesome. They were my best friends, and I, I love my parents. Aww, nice. That's so sweet. Okay, I think. Do I have the last question? No, okay. Oh, last no. question. Go ahead. No, we got plenty more. <laughs> no, go ahead. Shoot him quick. Okay, quick. Shoot him my last quick. question. Yeah. Who do you take on a road trip with you? Kubi. Kubi. Okay. That was easy. Nice. All right. Kubi, you're the one. <laughs> Can it, does it have to be does it have to be a person that's alive? Uh no, of course not. Who are you gonna anybody? ride with you to scare Kubi? Who who's it gonna be? <laughs> Uh, because I'm I'm making a movie about him, I'd say I would love to. Uh, I would go. I'd like to go on a ride with James Dean. Just Ooh. one. You're a glutton for punishment. I, I would I would say stay in the parking lot. Let's go in circles. <laughs> we'll just drive in circles. <laughs> yeah. I didn't say where we go, but we're going on a road trip in the parking lot of the Sears. It, it, oh my yeah, gosh. and it's not going to be in Little Bastard, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, we're gonna drive in the most like safe car ever. Ever driven. <laughs> Wait, just man, that just made me think of Hugo. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't think Hugos are safe, but they're definitely scary. I don't know what Hugo 
you girls just freak me out. I don't know why they just do. What does? A you go. Oh, those cars. <laughs> the car that you go? Because you, yeah. like, you said the safest car, and you go just popped in my head, and I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Well, yeah, it would be a car like that. And it would be like, I would just grab the keys. I'd be like, I'm driving but <laughs> in circles. But that would be someone I would like to drive with because I would, would love to know know it all. You know, I want to I wanna pick your brain. If we're going to make a movie about you, like, I want to hear it from you. Oh, yeah. You know, make That'd it. That would be a crazy, awesome ride, right? Oh, yeah. without a doubt. Yeah. That would be an awesome ride. And then, so the, the, and then the next person would be Doc from Back to the Future. And that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Not so much to ask for. No, that's not much. No, no. Uh, and, and plus, also uh, that eliminates one of my questions because one of them was going to be, "What was your dream car?" But you already kind of answered that with the DeLorean. So, yeah, that was. Solid. I'm going to get it back one day, and I'm going to make sure that it has completely flame retardant. I'm going to make sure it never catches on fire. I'm just going to make sure of that. Oh, oh sweet. Yeah. So, all right, so, so what would be what is a must on your bucket list? A must. Um, well, I'm I'm doing my bucket list right now, making like my 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 dream film. Um, but if it's something like adventurous or something crazy, I'd say my bucket list is to uh, bungee jump off the Statue of Liberty. Nice. <laughs> scary. Words. scary, but nice. What do you think about that? Okay, I have to say that is the first time I've ever heard anything like. Is that something people do? It's something that. I think can be permitted to do. I'm going to be the first. Oh, well, I didn't know. If, I mean, I'm old and stuff, so I didn't know if there was like some new bungee jumping thing going on. I mean, I, I've done it twice, but I would be worried that, uh, you know, uh, on the on the recoil that I would. Uh, you would uh, hit that. That I would kiss her. <laughs> that would be amazing. You'd go up and just plant one. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you for giving me that other idea. That's happening now. That's he happening. aims so high. He aims so high. <laughs> that is the best. Oh yeah. I'm just picturing this in my. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great uh, look. I I had a book. I had a book published about my life. I I am doing my dream job, um, and um, I I think that's the one thing that I've always wanted to do. That's adventurous. That's crazy. That is like a a, a hell no, but I want to try it. So. So uh, Caitlin asked, do you have any, uh, uh, do you have any tips for screenwriting? Screenwriting? Absolutely. Uh, if you're trying to write feature films um, and that's the, that's, that's the one tool every filmmaker should have is to understand story. So number one, read story by Robert McKee. It will change your life. If you want to be a writer, read mm -hmm. story by Robert McKee. It will change your life. It will open up your eyes because a lot of filmmakers have blinders onto the world. They watch films two-dimensionally. That book is going to help you start watching it four-dimensionally. If there's like You're going to start seeing structure and how films are actually written. You're going to see blueprints in screenplay format when you read that book. It's an incredible book. If you can't read because you, people don't like to read nowadays, then at least take his, uh, his online classes. They're, it's incredible. Um, uh, but... Tips for screenwriting, watch good films, watch really good films, watch bad films, watch horribly bad films, watch all films and see what works and what doesn't work. Every screenwriter has got a different process of how they write, but I'd say that's the foundation. Understand how movies work. So watch them, study them, okay? And listen to people when they talk because every, a lot of scripts, everyone starts writing like the ever all all the dialogue, all the characters start sounding like the writer. Mm -hmm. They all sound like one person. If you want to start giving your characters voices, start listening to people. So that's my advice for screenwriters: listen. Start listening to people when they speak. Go to coffee shops and listen to how people talk. Just start listening. Everyone likes to talk. Just listen, and I promise you're going to start picking up on how really people speak, how they communicate with one another. And last but not least, write about what you know. If all you know is going to the bathroom, then write an awesome horror movie about what comes out of your and what comes out from the toilet because that's <laughs> going to be an awesome horror movie, I assure you, because you're writing about what you know. You know, um, If you've never been a soldier in Vietnam, then you shouldn't be writing Vietnam War stories because that's not your experience. You, know? you can study them. You can go to Vietnam hospitals. You can go to VA hospitals and 
speak to vets and get all the all knowledge you want, but you've never been to war. You've never experienced that. I think you should write about what you know, at least at first. Yeah. You know? And then there. once you be become more experienced, then I think you can start branching off, but start with what you know. Does that help? I, I think that that answered her question because the, the, her next question was also, what was what is your process? And I think you covered that. <laughs> process. Every process is different. Yeah. It really just depends. For me, it's starting with an idea, have an idea first. And it's a, and if it's an idea that you love, if it's an idea for, for a movie that you can't wait to see, this is a movie that I have to see, then you have to write it, write that story. If it's something that's like, Oh, we've seen it before. Or this is a, an idea that I, I think I saw it once, but I kind of want to change it. No, 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 no. You should write about something that you really have to see. Start with that. And, uh, you know, there's some there's some screenwriters that I know that spend years writing a script. They'll just have multiple index cards all over their house, and it just looks like they're going crazy. That's not my process. My process is start with an idea and start writing it in story format. Like write a short story, see how your short story sounds, and then from there start giving start giving um, birth to characters. Give your characters biographies. Start listening to music that your characters would listen to. Start visiting places that your characters would go to. I don't, when I write about teenage girls in my stories, I'm not a teenage girl from Oklahoma. At least I don't think. So I would, uh, I would uh, start listening to music that they would listen to. What kind of posters would they have on their walls? Mm -hmm. What kind of food would they like? What kind of people would they, did they interact with? Start becoming your character. Start writing that out. So what that, that in turn will start giving true authentic voices to your characters when you start writing them on page i hope that makes sense oh yeah and that would well put yes it's just like just d dive yourself into someone else's life uh, as best you can so yeah i like that it's great advice she did ask uh she did mention about how you uh you have amazing punchy vi uh visuals in your films and uh what's your process around putting it together in an impactful image that's a damn fine question. Yes. Wow, I'm just gonna snapshot that. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Thanks, that's a great question. Um, you have amazingly punctual visuals in your films. Um, what is the process? Um, well, also when I see some filmmakers, when you, see the, when, you, when you see really great filmmakers that know how to tell a story with their camera, that's, those are the filmmakers you should start studying because Making movies is not just pointing your camera at something. What you see so much is so many filmmakers out there just pointing their camera. Just I, I'm just going to use. It's all about toys. They care about the camera and the lenses and all that. That's not what it's about. It's it's really about the story. Everything is about story. That is our job as filmmakers. If it's not about the story, if it ain't on the page, it ain't on the stage. Is what they say, right? So, for me, I would focus on my story, my script first. Get that tight before I put anything to visuals. But as a visual, as a visualist myself and as a filmmaker myself and as a writer, I make sure that I'm writing for the, for the, for what's going to be on screen. I'm shooting for the edit. I'm always thinking ahead. <clears throat> so <clears throat> it's very, I don't know. That's, that really depends on the filmmaker of how I start putting things together visually. But I will, I will say this, that like that start, that's going to start coming to life once you start putting it on the page because you should start visualizing and imagining your world and your shots as you're writing. Write for the screen. And you should write for the edit as well. You should already see it. My scripts are slightly a little bit longer because I'm already like writing shooting scripts. I'm already writing scripts that are going to be helpful for the editor later down the road. Hopefully that's helpful for that question. But uh, Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, we definitely, um, I wasn't joking, we definitely need to check back in with you in, in a few months. There's so much going on. And actually that's a really good um, advice. Um, the breakdown that you just gave. Um, so good question. Thank you, Caitlin. That was awesome. Yeah, um, hopefully, that was, hopefully that was helpful, Caitlin, but you can go anyone that has questions or, or cause I, like I said, um, we're all climbing the mountain. I'm just right now I'm stopping and I'm talking to George and Audrey on this mountain, but we're going to continue climbing every second. And uh, anyone that has questions or thoughts, I love bringing people on the team. I love bringing uh, aspiring filmmakers and people that are hungry to tell good stories. So if you have questions, just go to my go to my Vimeo page and email me. And I I always ap uh, appreciate filmmakers that reach out because um, I want to see good movies out there. So any type of 
encouragement or advice I can give to people that are on the mountain with me, I, I, I would love to extend my hand because some great, some greats have extended their hand to me. So we got to do it for each other. Awesome. And see, that's what we love about filmmakers like yourself. It's just like, you know, yeah, it's just, you know, help everybody else out. It's like, let's pitch in, let's make this really nice. Let's, you know, everybody can have a piece of this pie. It's just like, enjoy it and let's build each other and help us work uh, and, and better uh, ourselves to, uh, to put out better product and, uh, you know, make sure that we can all enjoy um, you know, what we love, uh, that we all have the same passions. We're all doing the same things because we have that passion. Yeah, absolutely. We love it. We love what we do. This is the best job in the world. We get to share stories and stuff. So, and, and, and put it on screen and inspire and move people. You know, my, uh, my favorite film of all time is not a horror movie. And, uh, and, uh, that movie moves me so much and inspires me every day. It's called October sky. Okay. I know that movie. Oh Yeah. I love that film so much because I watched it when I was a kid and it like, it resonated with me so much because it's the, the, it, 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 it motivated me to want to continue to be better. And it motivated me to not take no for an answer and to keep climbing. And we all have that fire inside. We just know how to yep. spark it. I think no makes me want things even more. Um, because someone telling me I can't do it or that I shouldn't do it or, maybe I'm not to the level that they think I should be, or maybe they don't feel like I qualify for something or whatever, whatever, whatever the reason. No is like, oh, okay. <laughs> um, and I think honestly, being told no, or people ha not having that expectation has always been a driving force. Um, the more someone tells you you can't, the more you're like, I'm gonna prove you wrong, even if for my own satisfaction. I'm the same exact way. That's why I tell people, it's like, when I want pizza, tell me yes, because then I'll go, okay, you're right. I shouldn't have it. <laughs> no, I'm just going to be like, well, I'm having it. <laughs> and I'm going to be a blimp. That's awesome. <laughs> okay, so we're going to drop some links when we um, end this. And um, go ahead. You said mentioned v Vimeo. Is there anywhere else you would like people to catch up with you? Yeah, you can go to my Vimeo, that's vimeo.com forward slash my full name, Samuel Gonzalez Jr. Or you can go to my Instagram and drop me a line there. My name is also just Samuel Gonzalez Jr. All one word, no spaces. So those are my two portals that I'm on uh, if you want to communicate with me. But if you want to see my work, my Vimeo is, I'm always updating it. You can see my showcase reel and all the, all the, all the, uh, the work that's going to be coming out over the next year. I update it constantly. I'm always putting up teasers or trailers. And talking to other filmmakers on Vimeo, so it's a it's a great it's a great platform for for us to speak. Awesome, so, awesome. All filmmakers out there, please please read story, please watch films, good films, bad films, watch them all. No, understand that you have to know how to build a blue how to make a blueprint before you start building a house. Please don't start building a house before you understand what a blueprint looks like. It will collapse on you. It will end up at the five dollar Walmart bin. You don't want that. Make a good movie. Make a good movie, please. In order to do that, no foundation, no fundamentals. That's so important. That's what my mentors told me when I was in film school, coming up to them with awesome visuals. They're like, it looks good, but I don't understand what you're trying to tell me. Get out. And I'm like, man, that sucks to hear, but I really appreciate it. Yeah. I oh, mean, yeah. you can't get better without knowing what you're doing wrong or what you you know, need to improve. Not so much necessarily doing wrong, what you need to improve, because there's always aspects that, you know, people can improve on. So yeah, you got to improve. I remember my first agent when I was first out here, he walked out of my first screening of like something I had. He walked out my first agent out of my first screening. And I was like, what did I do? And he told me later, he's like, it looked nice, man, but there was no story. There was no heart there, man. That hurts so much, but I thank him. And I thank everyone that's ever told me that because now I see it when I write it, I go, if there's no heartbeat, it's not alive. Why would I ever put it out in the world for anyone to feel anything? It's not good. Makes sense. But some people don't know how to see that yet. So, yeah. And some people can't take criticism, uh, yep, uh, even yep. though it's just like, you know, it's he wasn't meaning to be malicious. It was just like that. He didn't feel what you were trying to. And so I think he was just giving you an honest criticism and you made sure it's just like, OK, I'm going to make those changes and I'm going to make you feel something. You know, it's just like you're not going to watch one of my films and not feel anything. I'm going to move you. I'm going to be Pixar. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and I appreciate the, the, the smack. He gave me a smack, which is really hard to do sometimes nowadays. People don't like to be smacked. You can't even look at people the wrong way. It hurts. Yeah. But 
Sometimes <laughs> you need that smack because it just makes you go, okay, I'm going to come back. And let me tell you, that guy came back to my, to my, to my, to my first premiere at San Diego and it won best military film. And he shook my hand and he goes, that's what I'm talking about. And I go, thank you because of you, because you and all the other mentors that told me this isn't working. I'm going to rip this script up and throw it in the trash. Cause it's not, keep go back, go, keep going back, go back, go back, go back, keep coming back to me until it's ready. And I, I think that can discourage a lot of people, but I promise rejection is the best thing you can take. Take it. Use it yeah. as fuel. Yes. Agreed. 100%. That's a perfect way. Let's wrap this on up. Samuel Gonzalez Jr., thank you so much. <laughs> Stick around after this. We're going to end up uh, ending this uh, this broadcast. But thank you so much for, uh, uh, for hanging out with us, talking with us, and uh, giving us a little piece of your knowledge. We deeply appreciate it. And if it can help anybody out there or even inspire them to uh, uh, to want to create and do something uh, that they love and that, they, that they're that they passionate about, just like yourself, uh, then thank you. Know, I'm sure that they will thank you very much. We thank you. Oh, well, well, thank you. Guys, I thank you for having me. Thanks for your support and all your Absolutely. love that, you, that you've given me and respect that you've given me and all the other filmmakers on your on your show. It really means a lot uh, to me. Uh, you are two of the most beautiful souls that I've met on this mountain. Aww. I'm honored to be here. Thank, thank you, you so very much. much. <laughs> very much. That's that we do because we love it. And we just try to do it the you know the right way. And we just want people to see and others what we see in them. And um, we've been see, see, we're a fan sitting on this side too. <laughs> and you've yeah. got a lot of information to share, which I think is just great because you have a way about you that um I think that, you know, people will listen and take that advice. And honestly, I swear, I, I, I get such a teacher vibe from you. Um, like, you know, I don't know if it ever be, you know, as a film professor or if it's just, you know, this is the Samuel Gonzalez Jr. School of everything that I know. <laughs> you know, it's just I get a really, you know, teaching vibe from you. And, and you know, and that's good. That's real good. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. It really means a lot. Oh, speaking to me. of cats, <laughs> did hey. you just do a screen shake or cat just jumped? On Hi, buddy. The table? I he saw that. Sure. Okay, I, know, so I think I know him. Right. <laughs> Let me see. Let me see before we say goodbye. Let me see. Oh, go okay. ahead. You want, Don, come say hi to Samuel. Right. Come on, buddy. There yeah. he is. This oh, is oh, Dimebag, oh. named after Dimebag Daryl oh, from Pantera. That's a beautiful, that's a beautiful, that's awesome. And it's awesome. He's black and he's got socks. He's got he does, yeah, he's he's got, got, he does. He's got show, your, show your mittens. Wow. He's got, he's got ankle socks. <laughs> yeah. He, the only way I was allowed to keep this cat is if he could name him Dime Bag. Well, I mean, Dime just passed away. Well, he was killed uh, just like, uh, what was it? Six months, seven oh, months yeah. prior to us getting them. So it's like, all right. I'm oh, like, it was fitting. That's a great name. And that's a, that's an honor to be named after that. A legend. Yeah. All of our okay. animals are musicians. Um, Wyland, which I can't believe isn't out here. Scott Wyland. We had Mercury for um, Freddie Mercury. And we had Ozzy for, of course, Ozzy Osbourne. See that? And now you got Kubi for Kubrick. Ex see, oh, yeah. We, see? Just, we decided we should change the theme. Maybe the next round of animals we have. <laughs> Don't, she, but, don't even talk about that. <laughs> I'm gonna have a. I'm gonna have a farm one day. I'm gonna have a farm. I will invite you out. We will, you know, cook, and you'll see the farm and all the animals. But I want to eat any of my animals. I just want animals. No, just have them. Just have them all over. I love it. Embrace it, and then you're gonna see me running through it, just frolicking one day. <laughs> oh, before we go, before we go, because I just remembered when. Um, I don't know. It just. I. I, I completely forgot, but I want to say it right now. Uh, uh, you guys asked a goal of mine other than the budgie jumping thing. I want to just put it out there for the record because it's out in the universe. I want to be the youngest filmmaker to ever direct a Bond film. Ooh. And I think, and I think right now the record is forty-two years old for the youngest. Oh wow! Film. So I have to okay. beat that. I have to. We'll beat start that. hashtagging that shit. <laughs> oh, yeah. Samuel young, Gonzalez. young Samuel Gonzalez Jr. Young filmmaker, Bond, Bond director. I have like I have I have I have a few more years, so I can do it. So awesome. that's I'll a good it, I won't put that in the universe. I need your guys' help campaign. I want to do that. Oh, we you guys heard it here first on PopCon, oh, yeah. and that's why our tagline is: "If it's popular, it's here." That's what I'm saying, right? I love it. I've never said that. I've never said that any anywhere. So I'm gonna. <gasps> this is the so first honored. time I've said it. Yeah, my, I mean, my bond film might be a little bit darker, but why not? 
I'm hey, all for the dark. Yeah, we need that. Bond could use something different to, you know, throw it a curveball. Just like you know, put a little something dark in there. It, it can, a horror, a horror Bond film. That would be yeah. Fun, right? Or a, at least a very, very dark, um, threatening, villainous, you know, kind of Dark Knight meets Bond type thing. Hey. Like the real Dark Knight. Oh, yeah. yeah. Totally. Like, See? I mean, Live and Let Die had all the, you know, the kind of uh, mysticism, you know, with the, you know, adding oh, the voodoo yeah. in. So I'm like, you know. That's, that's one of my favorites. That's one of my favorite Bond films. Me too. Love I it. I love that one. That one, yeah. Man with the Golden Gun and Golden Eye and Skyfall are my top four. Nice. Awesome. Very so, nice. See, we so, could just keep on talking to you. This could be. Oh, a, I know. I'm know, sorry. We, we, we've been talking for the length of several. We literally could sit here and keep talking. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, that's why you got to come back so we can catch up with you. We'll so hang on. Don't go anywhere yet. We're going to close out the show and we'll be right back. Yes. Bye thank guys. you. Everyone. I don't know what I'm doing, George. Yeah, I, I, will, I, will, I will sign <laughs> us off and stuff. So thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Uh, we're going to still chat. Uh, sorry you guys can't attend, but uh, <laughs> catch us next time. Oh, but wait, no, wait. Hang on. Yeah. I forgot. We do have something to say. Okay. Oh, okay. Starting uh, next week, we have gotten a lot of requests about um, releasing officials, early official selections for the film festival, which we did around um, a couple of weeks ago. So since people keep requesting, we have decided to, starting next week, we will do at least one official selection announcement after the show Nice. So starting next week. And I'm really so excited. It's a really good one. It's one of my favorites. Um, just be it's, it's a good one. It, it's a good horror comedy. So I'll give you that, drop that hint. So starting next week look for that from um, popcorn spotlight. Okay. Now you can close it out. All right. <laughs> Thank you guys. Stick, stick around. All right. We'll, we will see everyone else later. Take care. Bye, guys. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you.